you know the drill, we're going to go and have prayer and then we'll get into our lesson. Dear God, we thank you again for always allowing us to learn more about you. Thank you for opening your word to our hearts that we might receive what you have for us to learn today. Open our ears that we might hear your word. Let our eyes see your word, God, and let us apply it to our lives. We thank you that even though we have young preschoolers or kindergartners or first graders, God, they are still able to learn more about you in the easiest and simplest ways. So we thank you for making your word plain that all of us might understand. We give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. All right, here we go. So again, today's lesson is um, the third lesson in our series, The Characters of Christmas. So today we're going to learn about the religious leaders. And those religious leaders are the ones that were with King Herod. So that's who we are going to talk about and what they were doing in the Bible when Jesus was being born and their role in the birth of Christ. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. Our focus scripture, I do not have hand, movement, hand movements for this scripture, but it says Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. If you guys can find that, I will um, have it for you. So Philippians 4, verse 7, one verse today, and it says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your, your it should say, uh, hearts, and your minds in Christ Jesus, okay? So, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we're gonna go ahead um, and, and get into our Bible story. But what this lesson is focusing on is the heart knowledge that you guys have, which means the things you know in your heart and what you know in your mind and how we connect those things. And we'll see uh, what we mean by that when we talk about the religious leaders. That might be a little hard to understand, but I promise you, we will break it down so you guys know what we're talking about there. So our Bible story time, we're gonna learn today from Matthew. So if you guys turn to Matthew chapter two, we're gonna read verses one through eight. And before we get into that, I'll give you just an overview. So in this story, we are learning about King Herod of Jerusalem. He wants to know where Jesus is going or where he's going to be born, uh, the Messiah, where he's supposed to be born. He doesn't know this information. He just knows he heard that there is a king that is going to be born. So the religious leaders that he calls in, they study scripture all day, daily, every day. They, they study the scripture and God's word, and they know exactly where he is going to be born. So we're going to let the story unfold. I'm going to read again, Matthew chapter two, verses one through eight, and I have my children's Bible here. And it says, Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. After Jesus was born, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the baby who was born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east. We came to worship him. When King Herod heard about this new king of the Jews, he was troubled and all the people in Jerusalem were worried too. Herod called a meeting of all the leading priests and teachers of the law. He asked them where the Christ would be born. They answered, in the town of Bethlehem in Judea. The prophet wrote about this in the scriptures. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are important among the rulers of Judah. A ruler will come from you. He will be like a shepherd for my people, the Israelites. Then Herod had a secret meeting with the wise men from the east. He learned from, the, from them the exact time they first saw the star. Then Herod sent the wise men to Bethlehem. He said to them, Go and look carefully to find the child. When you find him, come tell me, then I can go worship him too. So if you guys remember, our very first lesson a couple weeks ago were, uh, was about the wise men and what they did. So we know that they did find Jesus and they worshiped him, but they didn't tell Herod where he was. So now we're going to back up um, and we're learning about the religious leaders that he called in. So some discussion questions that we're going to talk about. What upset King Herod about the arrival of the Magi and the new star in the sky? Have any idea why would he be mad 
um, about a, a star and people following that star. So he was upset because the new star was in honor of a new ruler, a new king. The king was being born, a new king was being born, and he did not like that. So it says, why do you think a new ruler being born might upset King Herod? Why would that bother him? He wanted to be the only king. Could you imagine? He's the king ruling everything and ruling where his location, and he hears that a new king is going to be born. He is upset because he wants to be the only king. He doesn't want to be replaced. So that's why he's upset about that. Who did Herod send for to help answer the Magi's question? And he uh, asked for the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, which are the religious leaders. And as we stated before, they were ones who knew the scriptures that were written by the prophets. They knew everything. They studied daily. So they knew exactly where he was going to be born. The next question, where did the religious leaders say the Messiah was going to be born? And they said in Bethlehem. And as we learned in our previous uh, lesson from last week, we know that Jesus was, was indeed born in Bethlehem in a manger. Where did Herod and the religious leaders live? They lived in Jerusalem. And remember when we talked again last week about Joseph and Mary traveling, they traveled a long way um, from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. Did they, King Herod or the religious leaders, go see Jesus after they found out where he was? No, they did not visit him. When we talked about the wise men, we, we found out that the wise men went and found Jesus and they worshiped him and presented him, gave him gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh. These religious leaders and King Herod did not go see Jesus. They did not want to go see him and worship a new king because they, King Herod was upset about a new king. So the wise men didn't go back and tell him where he was, but they truly found him. So what is it about know Jesus and seek him? When we talked about earlier our head knowledge and our heart knowledge, this is what we're talking about. We want you guys to know Jesus here in your head, know about him, but seek him, know Jesus in your heart. So learn about Jesus and serve Jesus and want to know about Jesus and want to love Jesus. So it's one thing to know about God and Jesus, but it's another thing to seek him and to want to follow Christ. So the religious leaders knew about the Messiah, but didn't bother looking for Jesus to even know he had already been born. So by the time they go, they didn't go, go see Jesus. They didn't want to know about Jesus in that way. They just simply knew by scripture who Jesus was and where he was going to be born. So in this time, we want to remember um, not only to know of Jesus and who he is and what he represents, but we want to seek Jesus and really know him in our hearts. Okay, so not up here, just up here. So how do we tie those things? How do we tie our head knowledge into our heart knowledge? And that's simple. By knowing Jesus here and knowing more about him, we ask him to come into our hearts. And then we know him even more. And then we serve him and we love on him and we praise him. And just like the wise men, we come and we worship him and we present him with gifts. It may not be uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but it could be the gifts that God places in you. For me, you see me and uh, others on the praise team, we're offering our gift. God gave us a gift of singing, of song. So we're offering that gift back to God. And that's knowing him and seeking him in our worship our singing, our praying, our reading, even knowing and hearing the lessons that we present to you guys. That's seeking God because you're trying to learn more about him, not just here, but also in here. So we invite you guys to not only know Jesus, but to seek him, seek his ways, seek his knowledge, seek his heart, his love for you. And that way you'll have that head knowledge and you'll have that heart knowledge, right? That sounds good. 
Philippians 4, 7, this is our focus scripture. And again, it says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. So when we say that, and the peace of God, which transcends, I like doing this when I say transcends, it goes beyond what we can even understand or know. So even the greatest philosophers or the greatest historians, the peace of God transcends all knowledge of that. We will never uh, fully understand everything. It surpasses that. Um, and it will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. It will keep us. And that's how we should um, remember to guard our hearts, the peace of God. He will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, not just here, but here as well. So both of those things combine and we know who Christ is and the birth of Jesus. So it's important, again, we're talking about the Christmas season, the characters of Christmas. We've learned about the wise men. We learned about the innkeeper and making room for God. With the wise men, we taught uh, to seek God and search him, search for him. And when you do find him, when you, when you do find him, you worship him, right? The innkeeper making room for Jesus in this holiday season. It's so important. The Christmas season is about God. It's about the birth of Jesus. So now we have our third lesson, which is about the religious leaders. Don't just know who God is through words and through books, but know him in your heart. Know him and seek him in your heart. So let's combine what we know up here, combine it with what we know in our hearts, and let the peace of God which transcends all understanding, guard our hearts and our mind in Christ Jesus. So we're going to pray out today. God, we thank you for the knowledge that you have given us today, that you have dropped in our spirit, not only in our hearts and our mind, but in our spirit, God. We thank you for that. We thank you for allowing us to remember you in this season, to make room for you in this season, God, allowing us to seek you in this season and find you and worship you and worship the birth of Christ, God. We thank you for those things. We thank you that we can combine our head and our hearts and know God and find God and seek him and that you will guard our hearts and our mind. God, allow us to learn more about you. Allow us to continue to want to learn more about you. Thank you for those who watch today, God. Thank you for those who are here listening, God. Guard their hearts, God. Uh, hear their hearts, God. Even though they're young, God, they have a heart that yearns for you. So we thank you for that. We thank you that they continuously tune in with us and learn more about your word. So protect them and keep them and give them the desires of their heart. In Jesus' name, amen.